TikTok land, Lisa the Love Coach here, and I am feeling some questions that people may have about dating and relationships. I wanted to begin and kick off this talk, give people time to jump on if they see me. And actually, I'm trying to see how somebody told me how to go ahead and invite people. I'm like, I don't know how to invite people onto these things. I don't know who's like how to go about this. Let's see, admin settings, support nonprofit, I don't know. Hi there, um, new pop joined. I don't know what this does. Oh, you can find people, you can invite people. Okay, but I don't wanna invite them to host. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to dive on into this topic and talk. So if you're seeing me on YouTube, cause I'm gonna put this video up on here. I hope this helps you out. I hope this serves you well. I am Lisa the Love Coach. You can find me on Instagram at Lisa the Love Coach. You can also DM me there. You can comment below. You can ask your questions. You can find me at lovequestcoaching.com. Okay, so let's dive in. Today, I wanna talk about chemistry. I wanna talk about how important it is to do several things to assess chemistry. So look, sometimes when you're dating, chemistry is one of those things where boom, it could hit hard and fast. And you can really be into somebody really quickly, right? And then all of a sudden, after a few dates, you start to really see what they're about. You start to see, hmm, I don't know if I'm on the same page with them with values. I don't know if they're on the same page with me about their attitudes about money and their lifestyle. So. It's important that you allow some time, but it's more important that you understand what questions to ask and what to look out for and to really trust your intuition, trust your body and respond to what it is that you're really truly feeling inside. On the flip side, we often see people giving chances to people, right? You want to give a fair chance, maybe three dates, right? The first date, you could be a little nervous. The second date, you're just kind of you know, having fun and seeing if there's a good connection there. But by the third date, there should be some sexual chemistry. There should be like at least the desire where you look at this person and you're like, yeah, I'm definitely into them. And I don't necessarily want to have sex with them today. I don't think I'm ready. I want to get to know them more. I want to just kind of go about this in a certain way. But it's on because they're hot and I'm feeling it. If you're not feeling that, there's no need to drag it out and continue to give chances to people and raise their hopes and make them think that they have a shot. Mm. And people do this. Mm. A lot of girls, I'm gonna call you out, honeys, you're doing it for the dinners. Stop dating for the dinners. It's mean. It's mean and it's very low vibe and it's not dating like a queen, okay? There are a lot of girls out there who are keeping guys in their little bullpen because they know that you can be like, oh, I'm gonna go out with this guy on Wednesday and he'll take me out for a bite to eat. Meanwhile, you have no desire to be with this person long-term and it's unfair. So do not date for the dinners. Oh, I have a question. What makes you an expert on relationships? I mean, do you have a degree in sociology or some such? Well, thanks for your question. I do have a degree, yes. I went to Rutgers University, class of 1993. I'm an old girl. I majored in communications and minored in psychology. And I went on to have a long career in public relations. And so I'm very much interested in language, communication. I use that in my coaching practice. In 2015, I became a certified professional life coach. I studied at Florida International University with the Institute of Professional Excellence in Coaching. And I decided after my own healing journey after divorce, curing myself of codependency and helping others to do the same, that that would be the niche that I focused on, dating and relationships. And I coach people on other life issues as well, but mainly the thing that they come to me for is for stuff about post-divorce reinvention, dating at midlife, because I'm 50, so a lot of the people I coach are in that 40 and over range, although I do coach people who are younger. So I really appreciate your question. Thank you for asking. And if I can help you out, I'm happy to do so. You can actually find me on Instagram at Lisa the Love Coach and DM me there. You can also check out my website, which there's a link for in my bio. Um, and my about me goes into like even deeper detail about why I became a coach and how I had this whole other life 
um, in public relations and marketing and how I use that to transfer it into being a life coach. Um, let's say you're not old, very good, you're qualified. Oh, thank you for that. I hope I helped you out, Rocky. If you have a question for me, I'm happy to answer. Um, you're awesome. Thank you for your videos. Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks for watching them. Thank you so much. And like you guys, seriously, if you have um, questions, things that you want me to cover in my shorter videos, like definitely tell me. I'm always looking for inspiration and good content. And so some of the stuff that I talk about actually is reflective of what's going on in my own life. And so most recently, I took a break from dating to focus on the next stage of my business after, you know, dating and not really having um, a good result. So I was in a relationship for four and a half years. I ended it in 2020, late 2020. And I wanted to take some time just on myself to, to heal from this past relationship, really process it. And I went out minding my own business, having fun, doing my thing. and. I was approached by men and so I have like this kind of like this open friendly energy so even if I'm out and about just like running errands and doing my life I often meet amazing people right everywhere I go I always meet amazing people so I was out and about I met this man and I thought he was charming and funny and I said okay you know let's give this guy a chance why not right so I went out with him and then it, it started moving very quickly and I had to just kind of assess what was going on and if I really wanted this guy, if I really liked this guy, if I felt like a deep, deep connection and chemistry with him. And sometimes, you know, it's very easy to um, look at a lifestyle that a man can provide, right? And be like, wow, like that's amazing. Like this guy has all this stuff going for him and it'd be really cool to be a part of that. But a lot of times we have to be very conscious of, wait, am I really into this guy or am I into the lifestyle that this guy can provide? So it's very, very important that if you're a guy and you're watching this video, work it backwards. And when you're on dates with women or mixing it up with women, don't be afraid to ask them, are you really into me or are you into the lifestyle that you think I can provide? Or are you into the comedy, the fun, the vibe of friendship and like all the dinners and the fun that we have together? Because you want to make sure that people are actually into you for you, for everything that you're bringing to the table. And sometimes it's not a match and then we find ourselves in these relationships because we're trying to force something to happen. We're trying to force a chemistry and it is not there. So we want to be very honest with people. We want to make sure we're honest with ourselves. Okay, let's look at some more comments. People are here giving amazing comments. Okay, so Rocky was permanently banned from Instagram due to political reasons. <laughs> oh, Rocky, honey, I feel for you. I, I am so disheartened about what's going on in, in America and the worldwide about free speech. It's just terrible. Keep fighting the fight. Jimmy, you give inspiration to many. I appreciate it. I see you, Jimmy. Thank you for that. Good day, Lisa and everyone. I got banned from Facebook and Instagram for posting Bible verses. Wow, honey, this is not good. This is not good. But you know what? Keep preaching that good word. Spread that good news. God is on our side. Have faith. Have faith. Everything's going to work out. You're going to see God wins in the end. Well, my heart has been broken, Rocky says, beyond repair, suffered an emotional breakdown. Rocky, that's terrible. I'm hopeful that peace finds your heart and that you um, are supported by, you know, people and content that you see out there. Sometimes just scrolling on these types of social media sites, TikTok, you know, you can find some uplifting words and people who are sharing their own experiences. Um, and that you're not alone. So know that you're cared for and loved and that you are not alone. And your heart is a very resilient um, part of you. And with faith and self-care and self-love, you will rebound and you will be stronger than ever before. Um, let's see, who else? Um, doo -doo -doo, Myrtle Beach, hi. Um, how do y'all from Alabama? Well, hello, my friend from Alabama. 
Um, can't bring myself to extend any emotional vulnerability beyond my reach. Rocky, you're not alone in that, honey. A lot of times people get burned in relationships and they just feel so fearful about opening themselves up again. So what I recommend for that is spend time with yourself and be your own truest love and your bestest friend and understand that your worthiness doesn't come from people. You're gonna hear me say that often in my content. Your worthiness does not come from people, your worthiness comes from your creator. So that means that people can reject you, they could betray you, they can make terrible decisions and be mean and say awful things to you and try to put you down, but when you know in your heart that none of their opinions matter because it's your creator, who deems you worthy and not other people, that helps feel much stronger and much better and more connected to something stronger and beyond that of people. So I hope that helped you. That helped me a lot. Um, back in the day, I was highly codependent. I always was looking to get approval and validation and be good in the eyes of other people. And that was just a recipe for disaster. That was like, wait a second, I'm sitting here trying to make it that I'm liked and that I'm approved of by everyone outside over there. Meanwhile, that's a that, that's just like putting you in a, in a hamster wheel of being a people pleaser, of not being true to yourself, not advocating for yourself. So it becomes a thing where you cling to people in relationships at least that's what I used to do. I was chasing, I was over-pleasing, I was like, but look how good I am, proving my value, proving my worth. And you never wanna be that in a relationship. You wanna be you know, true to who you are, treat people right, but have boundaries, have healthy boundaries, and pay attention to how people are treating you in return. Um, so that's a very normal thing that you're feeling. Some people don't have options. Character isn't enough if you're a dude working at KFC? Well, that's a very good point. Um, are you looking to work at KFC for your whole life? Or do you perhaps want to own a franchise? Maybe you can work at KFC and learn about how to own your own KFC or several KFCs. And it's very important that you have faith and belief in yourself that you can be, do, have whatever you want. And the job that you have today does not have to mean your whole future. You can do whatever you find interesting and be the best at it. And if you serve enough people, people will pay you a lot of money for the benefits that you bring to the marketplace. So I love this comment, thank you so much, but I assure you that if you do wanna do more with your life and you love food service and you're loving the KFC vibes, um, think about what you're learning there and how that can become something more. How can you serve more people? Not necessarily KFC, but what are some skills that you're learning while working at KFC that can translate into another job, paying you more money so you can live the lifestyle that you truly want to live and deserve? So do not aim small. And you know what? Shout out to KFC because those popcorn shrimp, honey, I'm a fan. And the potato wedge fries, yum. And the mashed potatoes, I'm, I'm a fan. Now you're making me crave KFC. I might have to go drive through and get some. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you, Lisa. And yes, God always wins. Yes, God is good. Um, Alabama in the house. What's up, Alabama? Tracy, hey girl. Um, so Rocky says that he is a loner now and his last relationship was 12 years ago. I'm not codependent or doesn't need external. So Rocky's doing Rocky. Okay, so Rocky, look, the key thing, honey, is that you're happy. If you're living a happy life, rolling solo, and you're, you know, crushing it, enjoying life, having great friends, enjoying everything that you're doing with yourself, then that's your path and enjoy that blessed path. And everybody can totally, you know, be in a season of solitude. That's completely fine. Um, you know, all good, right? Everybody has to roll the way they're rolling. And the key thing is that you're happy and that you're feeling good. I just don't want to take a chance on heartbreak again. Well, Rocky, you can't let fear be your motivator for life because you're not going to do anything in life. So fear is a very powerful emotion, but it keeps us very stuck if we're not willing to surpass and overcome our fears. 
So, Mm -hmm. you know, I know emotional heartbreak is really rough, but at the same time, you're losing out on all the benefits of being in a relationship. And there are many, a lot of people grow a lot when they're in relationships. A lot of people learn things about themselves. It gives them the opportunity to heal things about themselves in relationships. So when you're saying that you want to take a chance on heartbreak, you're assuming based on your past, that heartbreak is going to happen again, and it doesn't have to. And that's the piece that says, well, it's impossible for my heart to get broken because I am not dependent on other people for their approval of me. So if somebody doesn't want to be with me anymore and they make an unfortunate decision, Mm -hmm. let's say perhaps they betray me, that's an unfortunate decision, but that will not break my heart. Will it disappoint me? Absolutely. Um, Will I need time to process that and heal that? Absolutely. But will it break my spirit? Absolutely not. Will it make me go under a rock never to love again? Absolutely not. We are all loving beings at the core. We are to be loved and to love others. And when you are depriving yourself of that based on fear, you will always feel terrible. You will continue to feel alone. You will continue to feel detached from other people and you are living a life of protecting yourself. And when you're living your life closed and in protection, you cannot be open and you cannot be true to who you truly are inside. So I hope that helped you. That's the stuff I help people with. Um, I have a program that specifically focuses on heartbreak recovery, um, reinvention after heartbreak, dealing with those feelings, dealing with the messages and the beliefs that that heartbreak gives to people the false beliefs that you think you're less than, that you think you're not good enough, or that you fear that everybody is out to get you. So these are all false beliefs that keep people really, um, you know, small and secure in a false uh, state of, um, of complacency and a false sense of security. If I don't go out there and I don't try to love anyone, then I can't get hurt. Well, that's not a way of living. So I'm hopeful that this helps you. Definitely commit to exploring why you are so fearful. And I'm sure that there's going to be a great discovery for you there. And if I can help you with that, feel free to find me at lovequestcoaching.com. You can actually click the link. If you're finding me on YouTube, there's going to be a link below to lovequestcoaching.com. If you're on TikTok, there should be a link in my bio. Um, Rocky, take, take a chance, but pay attention and don't ignore the red flags. That's a great piece of advice. That's awesome. It's very important to look at red flags, to make decisions when you see and feel these red flags, these things that come up that people do or say when you're dating and you're engaging with them and you're like, hmm, that seems a little weird. Or, yeah, I'm noticing they're having like cocktail after cocktail after cocktail on a date and like I'm not feeling that. That's a red flag. So there are many red flags. Um, I could do a whole other video on red flags, which I might do. Um, Can I call you Raven? Oh, my God, I love that name. You know what's interesting? So um, somebody used to call me that like a long, long, long time ago. That's so funny. Raven, the one with the raven hair. That's great. So I'm hopeful that, you know, you guys are on here. And like, if you have any questions, feel free. Tracy says, I pay attention to people's actions, not what they say. Absolutely. Super important. Um, Dog says, hello, pretty lady. Any advice on how to get a woman from Sarasota to come down to Fort Lauderdale? Um, So, well, there's a few things with that. And I love that you brought this up. Um, Number one, um... Long distance relationships are really tricky and here's why. If you meet somebody and they live, let's say, three hours away, I believe Fort Lauderdale to Sarasota is probably about three hours away. So let's say um, you and I met online and we started a banter with one another. And then I see your your photos, you see mine, and I'm like, wow, like this guy could be really cool. So I wanna I wanna know more. And I would at that point invite the person to do a phone chat like this. Like we can do a Zoom call and we can get to know each other. And then from there, you're gonna get an energy and you're going to see if this is a person that you would want to actually date. And if it is, then you can meet in the middle, you can have you know a, a thing where you like go somewhere together in public and you see each other and you hang out. Um, you know, see if, if there's a fit, right? And if there is a fit, then you 
figure it out. You figure out, you know, how can this happen? How can I take you on dates? You live where you live. I live where I live. Me personally, I'm not into the long distance thing. I never, it never works well for me. Um, but there are people out there that it is a fit for. So it's a very important thing to ask right from the upfront. Um, if you're feeling a vibe and you need to, you know, flat out ask them, like, listen, I realize you live where you live. I live where I live. Is this something you'd be willing to explore? And then you together can decide how that looks. What does that look like? Is it every other weekend you hang out or how does it work in the beginning? Right. You don't want to be having somebody that you just met online coming and staying with you in your home. Right. You want to you don't want to do that. You want to have an opportunity to vet people, to see what people are really about before you invite them into your inner circle of your space, of your life, of your family, of of everything. So long distance, mm, very tricky, Um, not impossible, but not easy to do, um, especially especially when, you know, you're just trying to figure out if this person is for you or not. And you want to, um, you know, have ample time to talk, to communicate one-on-one technology does help, right? Technology definitely helps. There are people out there who met somebody online, had full on conversations, um, formed a bond, formed a connection. And then like months later, finally made it where they met and like hit it off, went amazing. And then eventually someone will have to move closer to the other person cannot sustain a relationship far away. It won't work. Um, okay. Let's see what else. Hi from Germany. What's up, Mikey. Hi. Nice. Um, let's see who else is in here. Advice. I really like a woman, but her son is 15 and just has no guidance and she kind of babies him. So Kenny, thank you so much for your comment. That is a values comment that you just did. That's a comment about your values And honey, if you meet a woman and you know, you're all about, I can totally be into being with a single mom. That's totally cool. But this is the type of parenting style that works. And you have every right to say that, right? You have standards, you have your right to your values and standards, honey. And if you, um, are seeing that you're interested in a woman, but her parenting skills aren't, aren't where they need to be. And you're making these observations. She's probably not for you because think of it. If you enter that relationship, that's always going to be a point of contention between you. And why would you go in to be a fixer to go in as now you're going to come in as this dad figure. Like that's not, that's, I would not recommend that if you're dating a woman and you're, and you're into her, But there's a huge aspect of her life, which is her being a mom, and you're not on the same page with how she's parenting. You have every right to say, you know what, I really liked enjoying, you know, enjoyed our time of getting to know each other. But, you know, I see that you have a different parenting style than I agree. So therefore, our values are not compatible in that regard. And I can't I can't do it. Um, Don't be afraid. Be honest. You know, you have standards. You have your values. Honor yourself. Um, Tracy, yes, I'm well aware. Thank you. (laughs) Hello, pretty lady. Any advice on how to get a woman from Sarasota to come down to Florida? Um, Tracy said that that was directed at me. I hope I answered your question. So let's keep it moving. Um, 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 The other thing is I don't, I did a video, a quick video about um, parenting and like people who are open to dating people who are parents, but the parents suck. They have no ability to discipline their kids. They have no um, structure for their children. Their kids are running their lives and it's a turnoff. It's a massive turnoff. I hear this all the time in my coaching practice, mainly with men complaining about women. Um, Most of the single dads that I know of they're awesome. Like they take no crap. Their kids are super polite, super mature. Um, they have very clear boundaries about what's expected in their, in the home, what flies, what doesn't. Um, the moms are very, um, they're incredibly stressed. They're very much in their masculine energy. They are definitely struggling. A lot of them, they, you know, let their kids do whatever. And it's sad. It's very sad. So, um, Mikey says, I must go to work. I wish you all the best and God bless you. God bless you back, Mikey. Thanks for checking in. 
Um, Tracy says, I'm a single mom and I couldn't date a single dad with unruly kids. See, it goes both ways, right? And knowing what I know of you, Miss Tracy, being from the same area of where we were raised on Long Island, I would imagine that you have a pretty tight organized ship when it comes to your kids and you're not taking any BS at all. Um, okay. Hello. Hello. Hi everybody. Thank you for the new people who are coming on. If you have a question about dating and relationships in 2021, definitely feel free to comment below with your question. I'll do my best to answer it quickly. And we're right now talking about, um, okay. Yeah, you answered it all right. You're playing hard to get. So I'm 100% not playing hard to get. Thank you so much for your question. I know myself really well. I'm not interested in a long distance relationship at all. Um, I'd say the longest I would travel for a relationship would be probably within, and this is going long, I'd say like 45 minutes. That's pretty much the, the max for me. But what I'd like to invite you to consider though um, is um why not attract somebody who lives in your town wouldn't that be easier wouldn't it be better to be like you know what i'm gonna attract somebody who lives within 20 minutes from me and figure out why that's a struggle for you i can help you with that so if you'd like to do a session with me you can um you can dm me at on my instagram feed which is at lisa the love coach i get a lot of people after i do these videos come to me and say, hey girl, I saw your video on TikTok mm -hmm. or I saw your mm -hmm. Instagram live. I definitely want to do a, a session with you because you touched on something and you're right. I live here and why can't I find somebody good to date? It's a great question. And if you can help me with that, Lise, which I can, I would want to talk and learn more about that. So thank you so much. I assure you I am not playing hard to get. I know exactly what I want and I'm not playing hard to get, I am hard to get. So let's be clear on that. Okay, keep it moving, keep it moving. Thank you for all of your comments and your questions. I dated a girl with kids who had no boundaries, doesn't work out so well. I'm a retired military. Oh, well, first of all, thank you so much for your service and for your attention and love on our great country. And yes, coming from a daughter, right? I am a daughter to a Marine and I was raised to have honor and respect and integrity and, um, uh, respect of myself and others and to hold myself to a certain standard. And so I totally understand mm -hmm. what that is. It's very frustrating when you're trying to date people and you find people who are good people and you bond with them and then you meet their children and it is a whole other side to them that you see and you're not happy with it. And it's like, wah, wah, bummer because you actually like this person, but until they involved in their family and you saw how their dynamic is with their family, it kind of sucked and it went off the rails. So, okay, so Brian says, my kids have boundaries. Awesome. Like I was saying earlier, a lot of single dads, oh, their kids, on point, polite, amazing. Rocky says, I have an empty nest. I don't mind dating a single mother. Well, that's good, Rocky. See, you're back in the game. <laughs> that's good. You're opened up to dating a single mother. I would imagine provided that her kids are um, well-behaved and respectful and all that. Hello from Palm Springs, California. Hello. Um, are you real? Um, yeah, am I real? I'm real. Are my real? Are these real? Yes, these are real. <laughs> I am real. <laughs> I'm not like a hologram or anything like that. I am real. Thank you so much for your comments. Thanks for tuning in. I'm teasing you what I, I'm, te I'm so teasing you what I can't flirt with a pretty lady online. Um, yeah, you can do whatever you like online, my love. You can do whatever you like. Um, never complains. He's blind and has taught me so much about self-love. Oh, Tracy, and the level of patience that you've learned. What a journey. What an amazing blessing. Um, I might just do that. This is good advice, but she really is a good woman. Yeah, I mean, look, you could... Here's the thing, okay? I'm going to give you a little glimpse into my life, okay? What I have learned is that if you attract good people, oftentimes it's going to be difficult for you because you're going to see things about them that aren't a fit for you. So even though they are a good person, it doesn't mean that they're a fit for you. So I want you to consider 
dating from a place of abundance instead of dating from a place of scarcity. And so what I mean by that is oftentimes we meet good people and we pour ourselves into these good people and we accept a lot of their bullshit because they're good people. When in actuality, that's dating from scarcity. It's an inner talk that says, this is a good person. I'm not going to meet somebody better than this. So let me take the good with the bad and work on this. As opposed to dating with a position and a belief of abundance, which says this. I met a great person. I meet great people all the time. The world is full of great people. I'm a good person. Therefore, I match up like attracts like. So I'm a good person. Therefore, I will find other good people too. Okay? I will always find good people. And that being said, I have specific standards. Okay? I want a good person who's also an incredible mother. Um, Someone who raises her kids with great values and respect. And I'm open to being with a woman, excuse me, who has these types of qualities. And you get very specific about those kinds of qualities. And you have faith that in a planet full of tons of tons of people that your person is there. So do not settle. Do not settle. Um, I may just do that. Okay, great. Answer that. Have to go. Get ready for work. Have a great, have a great day, gorgeous girl. Blessings to you. Prosperity and love to you. You are so beautiful. Thanks, Jay. I, I receive that with the love and kindness that it is given. Thank you. Virginia in the house. Hello. Love old town Alexandria. Greetings from Toronto. Thank you so much, Victor, for tuning in. If you have a question, by all means, drop it below. How is your French? I've never learned how to speak French, but I do love French food. And I've always wanted to go to Saint-Tropez. So there's my jam with French. Um, Rocky says, yes, old school manners, right? Polite and respectful. I want to get to know Tracy a little bit better. Oh, okay. Tracy has a nice, Tracy has a fan. Perfect. Um, Lisa, yes, thank that's me. I think I'm always trying to fix something. Oh, Kenny, my love. This is something that I find all so common. You're not alone. Don't think you're alone in this. Okay, so a lot of times out there, people meet people and they're good people and then they go into fixer mode or rescue mode. They say, ooh, these are all the things I like about this person. Then these are the things that I don't like, but I wonder if I can fix them. I wonder if I can help them be better at this. And that is a tricky thing, okay? And here's why. In relationships, we get with people who inspire us to be better, right? This is a good thing. But when we are trying to make someone be different or make someone see that they're lacking in these certain ways, that puts us in fixer mode and it's very much a sign of codependency. It becomes a thing where you're efforting and you're giving and you're like, you could do more, you could be more. What if you tried this instead of this? And it's draining. It becomes very draining. Now, this is not to say that you should be alone until you find someone perfect. Nobody's perfect, right? But if you are with someone who thinks that the way they're living and the way they're doing and being is fine and happy for them and they're unwilling to change or better said to be open to bettering themselves or they have a self-belief that this is who they are and this is what they're about that's going to be like banging your head against a wall it's gonna be a very frustrating relationship and that's when resentments build that's when you're like i wish he was this way i wish he was that way i wish this person was different and you don't want to get involved in that so I recommend getting very, very clear with what it is you want for your own life, getting clear on what your um, best partner would be and aligned with what you want in your life. So if you are clear about what you want in your own life, then you can say, okay, knowing what I know about what I want for me, what kind of partner would be most suitable for me? And then you get clear on that. 
And so this way you're not just dating and knocking into people at random. You're very pointed, you're very specific, and you're like, this is the ideal person for me. And this is the person that I know exists for me. And therefore I am not going to entertain anything that is not that. I hope that helps you. Um, yes, no more fixing. No more fixing. My favorite girl here. Oh, hi, you're so sweet. Thank you for saying that. If I send you some merch, will you wear it in a video? Sure, it depends on what the merch is about. I'm always opening open to looking at merch. Baseball hats, t-shirts, I'm all about that. Thank you for suggesting it. Um, you got good energy. You make me laugh. Have a great day, lady. Oh, I'm super happy. Thank you. I'm appreciative. Um, have a great day, too. Yes, it is draining. See? Um, hi from Louisiana. How important is love language compatibility? Oh my gosh, I love this question. Thank you so much for asking. I think everybody should take the five love languages quiz. And it's such a great way to understand yourself and how you like to receive love. Right? Knowing your love language is amazing because then you can communicate what your love language is to people and they can choose whether or not they are willing to love you the way you want to be loved. So I'll give you an example. My love language is gifts and words of affirmation. So you can buy me gummy bears and buy me candy or buy me um, you know, whatever, nothing, it could be small, large, medium, I don't care, I love getting presents, I love them. So you could do that, and you can tell me how wonderful I am, and I am yours forever. <laughs> That's basically my love language. And the reason why I have that love language is because when I was a little girl, my dad would go every night to the candy store in the Bronx, where we used to live, and when he went to get the newspaper at the candy store, and this is in the early 70s, I was a little girl, he would bring me something. He'd bring me either a toy, and this continued into my childhood. He was always bringing me presents. If he got paid from work, he'd stop at the toy store and bring me back a toy. So he entrained me to believe that love comes from presents. When people buy you something, it's a show of love. So when I get presents from people, I'm like, oh my God, I feel love because it brings me back to this place. Now, the other thing is words of affirmation. And that came from my um, relatives just always showering me with you know, love and affection as far as words of affirmation, saying how smart I am and how talented I am and that I can be whatever I want to be. So that is where that comes from. So to answer your question, there is a quiz for free online. It's five love languages. If you Google that, you will find it. Determine what your love language is and then communicate what it is to people that you're dating. Because trust me, a girl like me who loves gifts, that means I need to be with a man who can shop. I like to be with a man who's like, girl, let's go shopping. Let's go to get some sales. Let's go to the outlets and then have a nice lunch together. And if that is not a guy's jam, probably not going to be my guy. Um, I like the whole you know, spend time together. He's looking at like, check out this shirt that I just found for 50% off. And I'm like, baby, that's amazing. Get it in every color. And he's like, what did you find? And I say, I found these shorts and they're so cute. Look at this skirt. Look at this blouse. Look at this. And he says, oh, I like this. This looks nice. I'll buy this one for you. <gasps> and then I have a present. It's so nice. See, that's what I like. And it's not something that you should apologize for. You should own what your love language is. If you're a man and you do this quiz and you find out that your love language is physical touch, right? That's one of the five love languages. One is physical touch, which means you're a big hugger and you want kisses. And if you're sitting on the sofa, you don't want her to be on one side and you on the other. You want to be close. You want to have her legs over yours. You want her to scratch your head. You want to massage her body. Like if you're a physical touch guy, you cannot be with a cold, aloof, not touchy person. It's going to deplete you. You're going to feel like you're not being loved the right way. Okay. So let's think of another love language. Um, I said gifts. I said words of affirmation. Um, 
I said physical touch. The other thing is acts of kindness or acts of service, I believe it's called. So acts of service, if your love language is acts of service, that means you like people to do things for you. That means if you're, um, if you're a man and the woman that you're with, if her love language is acts of service, she is going to love it when you put gas in her car or when you do an oil change for her or when you take the clothes from the dryer from the dryer and you put them in the basket or you fold them for her these acts of service um babe i cleaned the bathroom babe i undid the dishwasher babe i did the doing and the acts of service that's going to be big points for you and i know how much guys love 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 to score points. So for the ladies out there, it's very important to tell your guys, baby, I love you and I know you love me and I want you to be able to win with me. I want you to score points with me and here's what I need for you to do. Here's how you can win with me. And you're gonna see men, they're gonna be like this. <gasps> she gave me the keys to the kingdom. She just told me how I can win with her amazing see and then they're going to do the things that you want them to do or or treat you in the way that you want to be treated right they're going to pay attention so let's see someone weighs in um let's see more comments oh there's so many comments um thank you so much for commenting everybody's in here wow more people are coming well hello there hello there um, oh, wow. Okay. Deborah, Deborah says my husband was murdered in January. I'm drained emotions all over the place. My love. First of all, I am so sorry that you in, are enduring because it's still with you. This trauma, this is very serious. I'm hopeful that you will find peace with all of this. It is not easy by any means. I couldn't imagine what you must be feeling and going through. Um, I truly hope that you are finding the right people, the right support, and the path to peace, whatever that looks like for you. And of course your emotions are all over the place, and of course you are drained. Um, truly sorry of your, for your loss. I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, love those eyes, thank you very much. <laughs> Um, hello, beautiful. Thank you so much for all your hellos and all your awesome messages. I'm really happy to be with you today. If you have a question about dating and relationships, we were having a great conversation just before. And um, yeah, so you know, relationships can be really tricky. The love language thing is really important. And it's important that you get clear on how you want to receive love. And that's what the love language test does. And it's great. It's great for it. Um, the true or false is very true. Oh, you're referring, <laughs> you're referring to a video, a quick video that I did that asked true or false. When a guy asks a girl or a man asks a woman to her, to his home, um, is it because he wants to have sex with them? Well, not necessarily. So my answer to that is not necessarily. Sometimes men just want to show women how he lives, what kind of life he can provide, um, how clean he is. Um, he's trying to see if that woman is somebody that is serious mm -hmm. about him. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that he wants to have sex with her. It might just be a thing where he wants to show him her rather. He wants to show her, um, more of like his inner world. Um, so I would imagine a man that has a lot of maturity and a lot of self-worth um, can very well invite a woman to his home without having it to be a sexual thing. And that the, the sex actually for a man who's very um, directed and very clear on what he wants in his life and working towards it and maybe has achieved a level of success on his own, he is going to be actually very reluctant to who he invites in his inner circle. So an invitation to a home of a man like that is something to value and something to take very seriously. Okay, let's see, where am I from? Oh my goodness, you mean where am I from in the world? Um, or what is my ethnicity, my heritage? What exactly when people say, where are you from? So I'll answer all of it. Where am I from? Let's see, um, well, I was born in the Bronx, New York in 1971. Um, I lived in the Bronx part-time. I lived on Long Island 
um, for the other time. I was raised both places. I also lived in Brooklyn. I also then moved to New Jersey where I lived with my then husband. And then I moved to Miami Beach, Florida, and now I live in Sarasota, Florida, and I love Florida. Um, as far as where am I from, meaning my cultural background heritage, why I look how I look, <laughs> that is because I am a Latin mutt. I am three different kinds of Latina. I am Puerto Rican, Chilean, Chile, Chilena, and I am Spaniard. So those are the three biggies for me and why I mix it up and this is what happens. <laughs> so thanks for your curiosity, I appreciate it. Um, Jeff, you're drop dead gorgeous. Jeff, I appreciate your compliment, thank you so much. Yes, Lisa from the block. <laughs> Actually, yes, shout out anybody, Park Chester, New York, Park Chester, Bronx, um, that's where I was for a uh, good first 16 years of my life. Uh, let's see what else. Who else has some good questions? Um, Texas. Oh, hi from Texas. My dad and my stepmom were just visiting my cousins and my aunt in Texas outside Houston and in Lilith, I think it's called Lilith, Texas. So good to see Texas people and laughing that my cougar clip is funny. I I have a few cougar clips. I don't know if it's with the ones of dancing and singing with, with Whitey 18, precious little boy. He's so cute. Oh, like this kid is like tearing it up on inter on TikTok and it, and it's like all people my age who are finding him attractive and whatever he's so cute but he's like young enough to be my son so I'm like all good he's cute I can say he's cute but like that's that's where it begins and ends I like men I'm interested in men like alpha men men who are um directed and focused and they know what they want and they've achieved a level of success and they're not done yet. They have more things that they want to contribute on the planet and they have more things that they want to do professionally, personally, and they're just out for fun and they want to have a wonderful um, high value woman by their side to encourage them and inspire them and love up on them and be their best friend and their confidant and um, you know just that ride or die type of person that's what I'm definitely interested in so thanks for your comment I am live um, let's see if there are other comments coming through and questions Hi, more people from Germany. How fun. I'm your age, retired military. Oh, Jeff, thank you so much for your service. My dad is Marine, so I have tons of respect for our servicemen, our troops, um, and all the sacrifices that they make so that I can do these TikTok videos and be free. I mean, the level of freedom that we have, it seems to be vanishing with every day, but I do appreciate it. And you were Navy, so thank you so much for that. Um, I remember when I was a little girl, my cousin was um, on the aircraft carrier, the mm. Nimitz, mm. and I got to do this amazing tour of the whole aircraft carrier. And because he had, um, I guess, ability to tour us, we were able to see like such cool stuff on there that other people couldn't see. So that was like a really good memory of, of being a child. Um, I have family in Orlando. Awesome. I haven't been to or no, not true. I went, I did go to Orlando. I went to universal studios. Um, do you know what part of Puerto Rico my family is from? Um, yes, my grandma, um, was from Ponce and I believe my grandfather was, um, Rio Piedra. He was definitely more in the country. So I hope that answers your question. Um, I was on the Nimitz in 2012. Nice. Okay. So I was on the Nimitz in, if I was like nine years old when I went on there, that must have been 1980. I was nine years old in 1980. So long. I'm part Latino also. Amazing. Hello to my fellow Latinos out there and Latinas out there if you're joining. Um, have I visited? Yes. Last time I was in Puerto Rico, it was a while ago. It was the last time I was in Puerto Rico was 2010. So it's been a while. So I'm due for a trip back. My favorite, favorite part of that trip was 
going with my mom on the ferry from San Juan, where we were staying, to Culebra. So we spent the day on that beach, and it's one of the best beaches I've ever seen in my life. And I'm a girl who knows about beaches. So that was amazing. Um, let's see. I love all this chat we're having. I, I love you guys. It's freaking great that you can just jump on here and have a chat. And I appreciate all of you for, like, coming on, seeing my vids, um, following me, and, you know, seeing what other things I'm going to talk about. And I really appreciate that. And if you're finding me on YouTube, because I'm going to download this and put this up on YouTube, um, find me on TikTok. I'm at Lisa the Love Coach there. And if you want these quick little snippets and bites of eatable dating advice and, you know, different topics and some fun stuff too, you can find me on TikTok, at Lisa the Love Coach on TikTok. So my loves, I'm going to bid you all farewell for now, but I will be back. I love all of you. I'm sending you good positive energy, good vibes. May you have a prosperous, blessed day. Everything that you want to have happen, that it aligns just perfect for you. And I will see you again soon. Much love to all of you. Bye.